Uh, his stand is a C14. And his uh, highlight will be Yes International and Experiment Share. Michael, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you. And thank you for the welcome. Uh, I'm really thrilled to be here, but also to be following a joint project like that, because connecting with teachers is what my projects are all about. And as I get to talk to a bunch of you, you'll probably notice I've been to most of your countries speaking to me other teachers. Well, most of them I've been to by bicycle. Uh, all of the EU continental countries and a lot of the non-EU countries. But as you guys know, during the past couple of years, traveling hasn't been quite as easy physically. So the two projects I'm uh, presenting were born during the pandemic as a way of getting teachers to share experiments with each other and getting students to, exper uh, to share experiments with each other. Experiment shares are monthly meetings where anyone who wants can come along. If they want to share an experiment, they're welcome to sign up and do so. If they just want to watch, they can just watch. So at my stand and here, I'm going to show you a couple of highlights from the past couple months that have been shared. So to start off with, this is a modified version of one shared by, this is a broken modified version. <laughs> uh, one shared by Astrinos, uh, Science on Stage Ambassador in Crete. And this was from the first monthly experiment share meeting. And I was actually in his lab in Crete. He welcomed me. Uh, I actually stayed in his lab uh, for a couple of days. Uh, that's where we had the, the first one. So I, I wanted to start off with something from Astrinos. Uh, and I'd like a volunteer for this one. Volunteer? Perfect. I, actually, you, you can still, well, no, I'll stand up so people can see, see you, but you don't need to touch it. Without touching, I want you to pick one of these rocks, say which one it is. The third one, okay, and I want you to stare at the rock, and I want you to try and move it with the power of your mind. And we should hopefully notice that long one is swinging. The others, they're not moving very much. Can we give her a round of applause? <laughs> now we might think it's something special about the long one. So can, can you try again, but let's pick a different one. Yeah, yeah, say, say which one. Oh, okay. Mixing it up, you think short, and then go with middle. So we're looking at the middle one. And when you look at that, the middle one, they're swinging back and forth. Let's give her another round of applause. And just for completeness sake, and you can do it from the comfort of your seat, let, let's, let's have you thinking about the short one and see if we can get the short one going. So we have the short one swinging wildly. Does anyone care to attempt to explain what's going on here? The number of teachers in the room, maybe someone's familiar with the principal lab work here. Don't be shy. And, and anyone put up your hand or just shout out what? Yes! Resonance frequency. Excellent, resonant frequency. So, with resonance, I don't need to shake it very hard, but if I'm shaking at the same time it wants to swing, if we swing them all, notice they all have different periods of swing. And if I notice, when it wants to swing back and forth, and I drive it at the driven frequency, we can get one moving significantly more than others. And all you need to do is make the movement as subtle as possible. And if you're pretty subtle about it, and like some of my magician friends, like Paul and Adrian, who gave a great uh, workshop just earlier, if the attention is down here, students aren't looking up here. And so you can drive without people even noticing. Um, so, in November's experiment share, Astro shared something similar to this. this. This actual version was actually from a teacher in Spain, uh, Chantal Ferrer Roca from the University of Valencia, who I, I need to visit again, it's been way too long. Uh, the next one is from December's experiment share. And the some, uh, some of the teachers from Serbia will recognize this one. A week before David Feetenby shared this one on December's experiment share, I stopped by a scientist's conference in Serbia, and they invited me to step on stage and give the final presentation. 
And so I borrowed Tanya's car keys. Tanya, are you are you here? Can you wave to everyone? No, single girl cannot be. <laughs> anyways, I borrowed her car keys, and they were too heavy, and this didn't work. And it, it like an example of experiments that don't work at all on stage. Um, so for anyone who's there and saw me fail with this, a week later I saw David Feeden redo it the right way. You'll notice I'm sharing two of David's experiments, because unfortunately he's not here to share his experiments himself. So it's important for me to share as many as David's as possible. And notice, I have a cup and a key. The cup's heavier, but if I drop it, it comes to the, to the rest before hitting the ground. So as the key swings, it picks up speed from the fall, and it'll go all the way around, and the friction will stop it from hitting the ground. Uh, we'll, we'll move on to one from January, and it's, it's a good idea with my notes. So, uh, a, a second one uh, shown by David, but the first place that I saw it was actually in, in Spain, at the DVD. Uh, how many people here are from Spain? Excellent. Uh, how many of you have been to the DVD? If you haven't been, you should go to Zaragoza in, in November. Anyone else who speaks uh, Spanish, it's, it's one of the best uh, places where you can meet teachers sharing experiments. Anyways, for this experiment, I'm going to inflate two different balloons. Notice they're the same size, same brand, they were picked from the same pack. And as I inflate them, I'm going to connect them with the tube. And notice, plain hollow tube. You can see through it, no tricks going on there. Okay, so two balloons connected by a tube. I'm pitching them so the, the air can't yet communicate. Which balloon is bigger? Shout it out. Bigger. White. Which balloon is smaller? Red. Which balloon has more air? White. Which balloon has higher pressure? White. Red. Ah, mixed results there. If I let go, an air can communicate freely between them. I want you to predict, will it go from the red to the white, or from the white to the red? So which one do you think will get bigger? Shout that one out on the count of three. Three, two, one. White. Red. I, I heard more white than red. Let, let's see if you're right. So the, the white's gotten bigger. A lot of people were expecting that. You've probably seen it before. Some people were surprised. And one of the surprising things with it is you're used to thinking things going towards equilibrium. One's bigger than the other. You want to see them both become the same size. But that's not how pressure in a balloon works. From an intuitive experience, the first breath you put into a balloon is the hardest one. Because the rubber isn't yet stretched. So the force it takes to stretch it out is bigger, and you have a bigger resulting pressure. And then once it's bigger, it takes less pressure to inflate it more. So the bigger balloon is at lower pressure. Uh, moving on, I'm going to show an experiment I actually shared myself at February's experiment share. And I showed it in silence, and I'll explain why after uh, I share this experiment. But I have two drinking straws and a piece of regular paper. It's A6, like A4, that I've ripped into four pieces to, to have more paper. And I'm rubbing them together, and there's a number of teachers in the room, so you could probably predict. If I put the straw balanced on a bottle, if I bring the paper near, will the straw attract, repel, or do nothing? So I want everyone to vote. Everyone who thinks it'll attract, put up your hand. Everyone who thinks it'll repel, put up your hand. Everyone who thinks it'll do nothing. And, and a lot of people have no predictions. <laughs> Let, let's try that again. If you think the paper will attract the straw, put up your hand. 
And do you think it'll repel the strong? Put up your hand. Okay, so that's fairly mixed. If you think it'll do nothing, put up your hand. Okay, let's let's give it a try. So we, we can clearly see attraction going on there. So now that we've seen that, if we try with a different straw, well, wait, like with the other straw, do we think it'll attract, repel, or nothing? Some people are saying repel, should we go with repel? Okay, it's repelling quite well. Now this is sometimes more confusing for students. My hands are uncharged. If I bring my hands in, do we think it'll attract, repel, or do nothing? Who thinks it'll attract from a parent? A couple of hands there. Who thinks it'll repel? A few hands, but less than attract. Who thinks it'll do nothing at all? Seems to be the majority, and let's test that out. Okay, just to make sure I'm not doing anything funny, can I get someone to come up here to try with their hands? So we see it. I, I, it's not just that I have attractive hands. I mean, I'm sure I do. But let's see if anyone else's hands will work. Uh, can I get a volunteer to step up here? You, come on up. <laughs> and of course, things discharge with time, so if it does nothing, it discharge the straws a little bit more. Let's give her a round of applause for having very attractive hands. <laughs> okay, and I mentioned before I showed that one, I showed a silent version of this one in February's experiment show. And the reason for that, well, I'll explain the reason with a question. How many people in the room right now speak English as their mother tongue? Put up your hand. So probably a lot of the people from Britain, Ireland. Uh, how many people don't speak English as your mother tongue? So that's the vast majority of us here. Oh, I, I could have put my hand up with the first group. I, I grew up in England. Uh, I, not in England at all. In Canada, speaking English. Uh, but I'm now in France. I'm team on uh, team France uh, for science on stage. But it can sometimes be difficult. If English isn't your first language, have confidence to share experiments in front of other people. So I'm, I'm very impressed by the majority of you here who are doing that throughout the festival. But not everyone is as comfortable in English as you are. And some of you are still not that confident to want to present on a stage like I am or online in front of other teachers. So by doing experiments in silence, we level the playing field. And then anyone, regardless of what language they're more comfortable in, can uh, show experiments the same way as everyone else. Uh, so the silent, the silent experiment share will be coming up uh, in the month of May. Uh, before then, in April, there's an Earth Day Eve uh, themed uh, experiment share. Uh, am I running out of time? I have more experiments if I have time, but I don't want to go over time. No, Ricky, there's, another, there's time for one more experiment, Michael. Ta time for one more experiment? Okay. <clears throat> so. We'll, we'll finish off with one. Uh, here I have a smartphone and a piece of cardboard with a lens mounted on it. And so I call this setup a card scope because it's a cardboard microscope. Good for introductory microscope work. And this one was shared in one of our first YES International meetings. That's the student version of experiment share. And my students in Paris last May were sharing a series of experiments to look at how different face masks work. Now, I joined the Zoom session with this, so we should be able to get the feed from my camera. Are we able to switch? Yes, perfect. Okay, so we can see a spotlight, which is the light coming through this lens uh, to my camera. And I'm just going to put it in front of two face masks. We can see some like beautiful African face masks. So that we can compare the weave size. So you can see not only the size of the fibers, and like when I'm on a black fiber, of course, it's darker. You can see the pore size of the size of the hole, and you can compare that to different mask types, like a uh, steam mask uh, from Serbia. And the fibers are a bit tighter on that, so it's, yeah, it looks kind of like cardboard. 
and something's yeah. <laughs> and same with like a standard surgical mask. And the idea is that when you look at the different size pores that you can observe on it, you can see what the biggest size water droplet would get through. And then do other experiments to look at um, uh, how far they could get based on aerodynamics after that. So that was used in a whole series of experiments where students uh, in France were sharing experiments with students in, in Ghana at the time uh, on how face masks work. Uh, so that that would be the final experiment to conclude. But to like to explain. Uh, oh, also I I wanted to mention I've got a whole bunch of lenses I brought. So anyone wants to make a card scope for their phone, stop by my stand anytime during the festival, and you can make your own microscope. Uh, to, to take home with you from the festival as well. And it's, it's great to use. Um, in, in Paris, I get my students to make them. And then I send them home with homework to take pictures. Uh, if you're doing cells, taking basic cells, I feel like it's about the level of detail you can get on low power uh, with a laboratory microscope. But also, I travel around a lot. And a number of countries I've been Especially uh, with the times I've been in Ghana and in Africa, a lot of the schools there don't have microscopes. And so this kind of solution, even though it's not perfect, it can be some of the first times that students are able to observe cells uh, rather than just a picture of a cell. And it's pretty easy to take photos and share it and communicate that way afterwards. Uh, so these have been a sample of some of the experiments which have been shared during these uh, frequent Zoom meetings. Uh, to resume again, the, the teacher ones, called experiment shares, they happen every month. Everyone's welcome. I hope everyone ends up joining. You'll see a number of familiar faces. I, I mentioned uh, David Feedley, Fee who a lot of you already know. Uh, I know Paul hasn't missed one yet, I don't think. Uh, Astrid knows neither. So you'll see people from around the festival there. and I. I Personally, I, I think it's kind of like a miniature version of science on stage that from the comfort of your own home or your own school. Or it's getting to travel and meet teachers from around the world without the expense or hassle of travel. And Yes International is a similar version of the same thing for students. Uh, please come by my stand to check out other samples of experiments. I'll be pulling out different ones each day of the festival. And I'll be joined by teachers and students from different parts of the world. This afternoon, there will be students from Ghana connecting again. Tomorrow, there's going to be a teacher from Germany, a teacher from Italy again, uh, some of my students from France, so student teachers uh, from Ghana. So please stop by if you're interested in the sample of the project. And, and please join Michael, us. I'm going to stop you there, because that's great. I'm going to stop by Stan, C14. They're going to come by Michael, I'm sure. You're going to do a fantastic job at Michael. Um, Mark, Mark, we're, we're right to a time, so maybe you can ask a question. Maybe, well, maybe a very good question. I hope you all, you'll write this all down in a book. I mean, listening to you now, I think this could be very nice material. How you your delivery as well, not just the experiences, but your delivery, is one which I think is very good and appealing. So are you, are you writing a book or anything like that? Uh, I'm, I, I want to write a book someday. I, I'm not yet uh, writing a book, but that, that's a great idea and a great compliment. Thank you. Okay, well, get to it. Okay, so Michael, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.